Good morning, Zion. You belong here. We belong together. Today we are celebrating the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Zion Lutheran Church is once again hosting live in-person corporate worship, and I want you to know that we host a blended worship service on Saturday evening at 5 p.m. and a traditional worship service on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you're curious about attending worship at Zion during the pandemic, please go to our website, zionohio.org, and watch the video that we released about the conditions of attending worship that begin as soon as you enter the building and extend until you exit. By the way of announcements, I want to thank Marty and Cher Teisler who got down on their hands and knees in the hot sun for two weeks and weeded all the beds around the church building. And then I want to thank Thomas Smith, Rich Beals, Fran and Vicki Riggle, and of course, Marty and Cher Teisler, who spread eight yards of mulch. The facility looks fantastic. Our next food distribution will be on September the 19th. If you can help out, simply show up that Saturday morning at about nine o'clock. Our next Red Cross blood drawing will be on Thursday, September the 24th from one to 6 p.m. For your convenience, you can schedule your donation by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or by going to the website redcrossblood.org and entering the keyword Zion Canfield or by searching any Red Cross blood drawing near you that is convenient for you. For more information about any activity around Zion Lutheran Church, I would again encourage you to visit the website zionohio.org for all the latest news and information. If you'd like to receive our weekly edition of Eye on Zion, or my daily devotional, The Daily Word, or The Occasional Word, or any of our occasional emails and announcements, please go to the website zionohio.org and go to the bottom right corner and click on the subscribe button, and there you will have several options to select. I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness. To make an offering, we suggest going to the website zionohio.org and clicking on the Give tab, or using the Give Plus smartphone app that you can download to your phone from your phone's app store, or you can text to give. Just text this number, 833-409-0694, and then in the body itself, text the word ASSIST and then follow the prompts. You can also reach us by the U.S. mail. Assisting in worship today are Joan Gent, our Administrator of Worship and Music on the keyboards, Michelle Vargo leading us in our singing and providing special music, and Carol Ann Schneider will be leading us in the prayers of intercession. Now I invite you to sing along to our gathering. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us, as disciples of your Son, to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David! My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. All his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. You may have noticed in the presentation of the Gospel text on the slides that what we appear to have are two seemingly unrelated stories included as our gospel reading. And when these brackets are used, it is an indication that the lectionary editors have made the passage contained within the brackets optional to the rest of the reading. So even the lectionary editors appear to be unconvinced that these two seemingly unrelated stories should be together. And while this may not be interesting to you, it is fascinating to me. Allow me to tell you why. The first part, verses 10 to 20, the part bracketed, refer back to a previous passage which you did not hear, in which Jesus had just done battle with the Pharisees and the scribes who had been stalking him and his disciples and observed that his disciples at least ate with soiled hands, an act forbidden by the law of Moses. I'm certain that if Jesus was our contemporary, he would be washing his hands and washing them often. But in the first century, there was no pandemic. Jesus responded rather harshly to them by pointing out that there are several laws that they don't observe that are equally, what, uh, inconvenient as not washing one's hands, and that many of their laws and traditions are void of the Word of God. So in setting the stage for the Gospel reading, what we have on one side are the prim and proper religious Jewish folks who work hard at keeping the law. But even the law, made up by overly religious men, was sometimes impractical and in contrast to the Word of God, as Jesus saw it. Then, in response in our Gospel reading, Jesus turned to the crowds around him and clarified what he meant. 
He said, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. The disciples were concerned that Jesus had offended the Pharisees and the scribes and mentioned it to Jesus. And he said, ah, forget them. They are deluded with what they think they know about living a godly life. So we have here the example of the Pharisees and the scribes who were super religious. Moving on to the second part of the gospel reading, we have this pesky Canaanite woman. She reminds me of those sand gnats they have down in South Carolina. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever been to the beach in South Carolina? We used to live down there, and when we went to the beach, these sand gnats would be buzzing around my ears and my mouth and my nose to the point where I couldn't really enjoy the beach. Well, this woman, a Canaanite woman, just kept it up. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Well, here's the problem. In the same way that I did not invite those sand gnats to bother me while I was on the beach, Jesus and his disciples, who were Jews, did not invite Canaanites into their ministry. You see, the Canaanites were the pagan people left over when the Jews took over the Promised Land. Though Joshua was told by God to wipe them out when the Israelites took possession of the land across the Jordan, they didn't. And instead, they made treaties and intermarried and adopted some of their pagan gods and rituals and so on, all of which was an abomination to God. So as you can imagine, good observant Jews had nothing to do with these people that they saw as unclean and unlovable. But she kept on. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. The disciples wanted Jesus to send her away. But what did happen has often been misunderstood. It appears as though Jesus tried to be done with her, and he used expressions that are difficult for us to hear. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Really? We think, did Jesus reject her, we ask? Then rather than accept her rejection, she just came closer, knelt before him and begged, Lord, help me. Ah, oh, Jesus, we think, you're going to do the right thing here, aren't you? And he answered her, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. What? We are outraged. Did our Lord Jesus just call this poor, desperate woman with a sick child a dog? Even then, she had a desperate response. And we are hoping that Jesus will so show some mercy. And he did. You will be relieved to know that many commentators on this passage believe that what was going on here is that Jesus was taking advantage of this situation to make it a teachable moment. On one side, we have the overly religious Pharisees and scribes, Jews who thought they were in the club, all else were excluded, and on the other side, we have this poor, desperate woman who was truly excluded, who saw in Jesus someone that she recognized and called out as the Lord and Son of David. Those words were not casually used in Israel in the first century. They had meaning. They were sacred, reserved only for those in whom was the hope of Israel. The Pharisees and the scribes did not call Jesus Lord and Son of David. In fact, they would soon be plotting to kill him. But this poor, desperate woman, a Canaanite at that, saw what others could not see. In witnessing her great faith in him, Jesus commended her and said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. 
Remember the Pharisees and the scribes on the other side? This poor, desperate Canaanite woman on the other, and all the crowds of people and Jesus' own disciples were watching. It was a teachable moment. And what he just taught was that there is no entitlement. Oh, but you might say, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 11 that God's calling of the Jews is irrevocable. And that is true. God will not revoke it, but the Jews can. And by worshiping a God of their own creation instead of the God of creation makes their salvation questionable. According to Jesus' teachings, people will be judged on their lives of faithfulness to God, not, set of, not a set of man-made rules. Unless we think that Jesus turned his back on his Jewish faith, let us direct our attention to the first reading in which the Lord God said through the prophet Isaiah, Maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. If you want to know God, then you need not look any farther than Jesus. Jesus is the revelation of God. Jesus is the incarnation of God. His preaching and teaching and his example are what God wants us to know about himself. And in this story, what Jesus wants us to know about his heavenly father is that he is the creator of all and he loves all that he creates. And his, as his disciples, we ought to love the world that our Heavenly Father created with compassion and constancy. And I believe that God believes that when we get that right, people will be drawn to us so that we can tell them about the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. Join me in a prayer. Loving Creator God, intuitively it makes sense to us that you love all that you create. And yet we encounter some who are just unlovable to us. Or is it us who are unwilling to love someone not like us? No matter the problem, we pray that you have a solution. Send us your Holy Spirit that we might shed our hatred and prejudices and love all people with the love of a parent for a child. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Don't find on earth the lost.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Confident of God's care and upheld by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the Christian church around the world, for humility where the church is dominant, for courage where it is oppressed, and for faithfulness when it cannot assemble for worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your bountiful earth, for cleaner air, for the fields on which our food grows, for the renewal of lands and waters that have suffered from disregard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the earth, for the peaceful resolution of disputes around the world, for just policies that care for the poor, and for the upcoming political conventions in our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need of healing, for the residents of Beirut and other distressed cities, for those suffering from hurricane damage, for those sick and dying of COVID-19, for the unemployed, for people without medical care, for medical workers and researchers, for the outcasts of our society, and especially for those on our prayer list, our homebound, and those we now name before you either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a spirit of respect, the world's religions, for wisdom concerning the many houses of prayer, and for guidance where religion serves as an arm of the government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for schools around the globe, for educators who must plan for the fall, and for children without the resources to access remote learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray finally for ourselves, for whenever we feel tormented by demons, and for all our family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We mourn the deaths of those we love, and we praise you for the lives of all your faithful people. At the end, gather us all into the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our sending song. Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. You belong here. We belong together. Go in peace. Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. <laughs>